level. Going to put the first layer of um, refractory cement in now. I'm going to try and get to about somewhere near this seam. I've made sure that this is level uh, because the floor isn't. <laughs> I don't know how far this is going to go. I'm wondering if I should put another bag. Here it goes. I have got two bags of this stuff. I should have bought three, I think. Okay, that's plenty for the floor. Just where I wanted it. Oh, that was satisfying. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll smooth it once it's a little bit more. Set. Well, that's perfect. I'm, I'm loving the height. So that is six centimetres, which I think is plenty. I'm very glad I um, put that metal plate in the bottom. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough. Still, I was hoping to cast the lid today, but I'm not sure I'm going to have enough. Uh, I guess I'll have enough to do the lid. I'm going to need more for the... Damn it. So I'm, I'm definitely going to need more. That's annoying because the carriage, the postage cost was quite expensive. So, <clears throat> right, lid now. These are really solid. I just wanted something to stop it falling out. Uh, and I hope that is enough. Uh, I didn't want to put them too near the, this surface because that's going to be red hot. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. Let's hope it works. I guess I'm going to need slightly less because of this. Okay. Well, a couple of those look straight. These two look nice and straight. This one and you're from, and I'm trying to cut through with the saw. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm trying to fill that. The last one was runny in description, and I would call this one thicker. I want to just make sure I seal around, the, around there with the thick stuff first. Catch my drift, and then I will make another batch. Oh, that looks nice. Blimey. How satisfying. I don't go all the How many bags? I'm definitely going to need one more. Take a measure of time. 
and sums time. Oh, I, I haven't got the sums with me, but I will go and get them in a minute when I light the fire and I'll run through it with you. So if anyone else does this, I will give you the exact uh, volume made with a bag of one bag of this stuff. I bought two bags, which incidentally was not enough. Um, I've just bought another bag online and um, which is a real not real pain in the backside because it was 20 quid shipping. Um, anyway, they only had one bag left and I did the sums and it is literally just enough. Fingers crossed. If it's not enough, I can always chop the top of the uh, tub to fit whatever level I get to. <laughs> I mean, it's that, uh, I don't really want to wait for any more stuff. So when this uh, bag arrives, that will be it. Um, and the same goes for the lid. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a rim. I haven't managed to fill the whole thing. So it's been um, nearly 40 hours since this was put in and it is finally hard. And interestingly, where is my little thermometer? The workshop itself seems to be about 12 degrees. Everywhere in the workshop is 12 degrees. But if I do the concrete, it's higher. So it is curing now because um, I was slightly worried. My, wet, my mix was a little wet. This bucket down here, it's 17 degrees inside. So it's, it's curing nicely, basically. It's a kind of an exothermic process the kind of initial curing is, is done or is nearly done. So I think it's time that I sort of assembled it and lit a little tiny wood fire inside there. The advice I've seen online seems to be get it to approximately 100 degrees, the boiling point of water, and then just hold it there for ages, 10, 12, hours, whatever you can be bothered to do, so that all the water slowly evaporates from the concrete. Apparently it's not very porous. If you just shoved a, a, burn, a proper gas burner in there, this is according to the um, stuff I read, water deep down in the refractory would become steam and the pressure in that expansion would create spalling and will crack well, it will kind of disintegrate and shorten the sh disintegrate the refractory. Uh, worst case scenario, or best case scenario, just make, make lots of cracks everywhere. Now, I'm, I'm prepared for some cracking to occur, but I think if I light a little tiny fire that is slightly off the concrete, so that it's not direct heat, it's more of a radiative heat. I think that might be good. Also, I'm excited to light a fire in it. <laughs> um, that's it. So I'm going to get, my back is gone, so I've got to be very careful. I'm going to use a sack barrow and I'm going to move this somewhere outside that will be out of the rain and I'll light a little fire. I did find some nice bit of channel though, so that should keep the heat the worst of the heat off the base. Oh, there we go. Oh look, burn that. Okay, well that's the fire light of it. So the base of the concrete is showing 18 degrees centigrade and the fire has been lit for a minute or two.
assuming now, I have to assume something is something. So I'm going to assume that this seam is circular. It probably isn't. So I'm going to set this up at an arbitrary angle that is roughly central. And I'm going to draw some lines. As you can see, it's all looking like that. There is the middle. Right. So it's five and a half there. It's way bigger, six there. So that's what we need to sort out next. Five and a half. Five and three quarters. So it needs to go that way and that way. Well, I've stuck that in there, I've stuck that in there, and I've kind of looked down and I've marked some lines where I thought it was going to go, measured the height of that hole, brought that up there, and that crazy egg shape seems to be the correct shape. So I'm going to cut that out, and then I'm going to pop that through there, and then kind of fill the gap with clay. Loads of this stuff around there, and then do the same on the outside of this tube. So I think that's sealed. That's sealed well. On this side it's great, but on this side there's a big gap. There we go. Right. Hooray! Time to mix up some refractory and hopefully get to the top, or if not, I'll cut it at whatever level I get to. to mix some refractory and pour it. So I've got one and a half bags and I really hope that's enough. Great. Well, I'm there. So, so far, so good. So this one's a little bit more runny. We're here now. Let's see how far we go. Fingers crossed. That's going any. It's quite close. I'm actually going to start putting in these spillage bits back in. You can do this. Not sure I'm going to have enough at all. Come on. I don't think we're going to get to the top. I don't want to be pessimistic. Mm, that's a bit dry now. Tam 
Put that down. See where we are. Well, I hope we're, I hope we're a couple of inches from the top. God. We're here. I think we're enough for a furnace, but I'm gonna to have to uh, alter it, obviously. There's a little bit left in this bucket, and I'm gonna mix up everything I've got left. This is everything. Oh, it's so close. Oh, I better tamp it down. Pretty close to the top. Oh, that, that's, do you know what? I should be well chuffed. That is, that is tall enough. And me wanting it taller than that was just me being lazy and not wanting to cut this whole thing down. So I have got a little bit left. Like a tiny bit. I cannot tell you how little I have in the bucket. That's how much I've got in the bucket. How much? <laughs> Bloody brilliant. I am so chuffed. Actually, if I, if I put any more in, it's, I'm gonna run the risk of overflowing just here because my plastic tube is a little bit uh, low. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm gonna resist the urge to... Uh... Enough of Rackfree Cement Dance. Can't believe it! I have no idea if this is level, you know, if this angle is level or not. I, uh, I don't really care at this point. I hope it's levelish. I'm so chuffed. Whoop, whoop. It's going to weigh an absolute ton. I cannot tell you how chuffed I am. I've been worrying that I haven't got enough. And I've been having troubles with editing of the part one. I don't know. These are problems you guys don't need to know about. These are fire bricks I got from Freegal. I would recommend you guys, if you're in a kind of a recycling type of person and you want to minimize waste and what goes to landfill, Freegal is a brilliant resource. I don't know if it's worldwide, but it's certainly in the UK. And people put things on there for free and you, can search for you every now and then you get a you basically tell it where you live and what you're interested in receiving and for how how far you're you're willing to go to pick things up and you'll get an email once every few days saying someone is offering some double glazing windows or I got a couple of my Calagas bottles from Freegal uh, and everyone I've met has been so nice and it's you get to meet people in your local area uh, like-minded kind of people that don't want to throw things away and this was a storage heater uh, I've got another sort of ten of these I should think probably next door and they are very heavy I did think about putting one in the base to, to, to fill up extra volume but I don't know whether they'll take the same kind of heat as this stuff will Wait to light this thing. This has been a really exciting project. You see there's a lip that will need trimming off. That's a, that's a good centimetre, 12 millimetres or so. Um, but this whole thing is two and a half inches thick so I think that's plenty thick enough. 
Now, I don't know if this, is, if this was a good idea or not, but I made the, the lid go in a bit. I think that was probably a silly idea because I guess it might melt. But I was kind of more thinking of protecting the, this concrete. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing, so I've probably made some, quite a few mistakes. I assume this looks a little bit like one of those poodles. Standing on the So chuffed. All right, that's me done for the night. Now hopefully, I think this will be part one. Whatever. <laughs>